So I don't have any PowerPoints. I just I don't want to spend too much time lecturing, but I have to give you um, an idea about what, what you may expect over the next two hours. So first of all, my name is Luana Gomez. Uh, I received my PhD in physics from the University of Washington. And my research uh, specialty is on the teaching and learning of physics for the population of college undergraduates, primarily uh, uh, students who aspire to be engineers. I've been a professor at Arizona State University in the Department of Physics and also in the Department of Physics at uh, Buffalo State University in New York. So we'll do some introductions uh, after I, more introductions of you, after I go over what I plan to do today. So I've broken out the purpose of the breakout session. You were here because you want to be here and you want to learn more, but more in terms of the roles that, you'll, that I expect you to take or you know, entertain me by and my role. So my role will be to facilitate um, discussions amongst yourself and to change the discussion based on what I hear or if there's concerns um, that may be but I need to get some feedback as I wander around um, in terms of an interaction or interactive learning experience uh, I will show by example so you will actually be experiencing what students experience in using this particular curriculum that I can describe later if you want more about and then allow you to experience it. So my role then will shift to instructor and to keep you in the role of the student. So that's what this is, educator. I want you to, to question, to share, to comment, to disagree. And as a student, which I'll describe later, um, I'll be a little bit more specific about prior knowledge if you have a science background. And just to, if, if you're concerned, it's going to be a topic in, in physics, but something that I think everyone in here uh, has a background from, you know, for coming into the class. And the third thing, well, is to actually do it, and I'm sorry I didn't finish that. And then I'll alternate, so in your role of learner and educator, I may alternate, depending on what's going on in the classroom once you start the, the lesson. And, um, I don't want to be up here talking uh, very much, but when I have to, if there's something arises that's common, I, I, I will come up here and just and ask you to break out. I didn't know that I was going to have, I was told that I was going to have a collaborative learning environment. And this, is, this has a lot of possibilities, um, but I was expecting tables. So you're going to see me um, revamp the room for a science experiment where you're working in groups of four, or maybe two or three, because there's not that many of you in here. Um, but you'll get an idea of what I'm attempting to do, to do a lab in a, in, a, in a room like this without having seen it before I got here. This is something I would typically do or advise anyone to do. But this is what I have. So what I want you to do is um, maybe introduce, well, maybe get into small groups. So there, I think, get into groups of three and move your chairs. So just like you did earlier in um, the other room. Yeah, so turn, you know, there's a lot of room. I don't know if you, any of you have seen the video of students using this type of room here, that are students here. Pass one to each. Each each um, participant gets one. I think there's enough. Okay. So if you haven't done so already, please introduce yourselves and and just you know let them know what discipline you teach in.
Hi, my name is Tatiana, and I teach languages, Russian and English. My name is Carolina, and I'm actually working uh, in the International Business Department as a professor. My name is Diana, and I work in the entrepreneurship area. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Diego Jurado, trabajo en el Departamento de Contaduría. Good afternoon, my name is Jorge Olmos, I work at Idiomas EAFIT. My name is Andres Alejandro, and I also work at uh, Languages at EAFIT, teaching English. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My name is Richard, I work in the Department of Engineering and Systems. Eh, mi nombre es Ana María y trabajo en el Departamento de Humanidades. I am Isabel Ángel, I teach Air Science at the Simón Bolívar University, Venezuela. I'm María Fernanda, I work at the Language Center here. I'm an English teacher for the adult program. Soy Sergio y trabajo en Educación Continua. My name is Anna and I work at the Language Center in the Children Program. My name is Andres and I work in the Earth Science Department here in the University. Hi, Ricardo Mejia, uh, Design Engineering Department. My name is Camilo Guzman and I am a Psychology student. Mi nombre es Elena Torres y trabajo en el Departamento de Ingeniería. Thank you. So what you have is <laughs> So what you have in front of you is a the papel with the four number four letters. And what I the purpose of that is to use it as a way, so some of you are probably familiar with using the clickers. <coughs> the clickers, the electronic. Okay. And um, this is a way that if you have a classroom, this is something you may want to use as a simple non-tech um, way of polling students in class. So what I'm going to do is just so you can practice it, it's not something that I use very often because I usually teach in smaller groups of students. But um, I thought it would be nice just for you to just, just experience that. Jeff Saul, uh, I think, uh, may have spoken about this, about a way of polling, maybe, by, on the side um, earlier today or yesterday. So I'm going to put up a question. And it has to do with um, your beliefs or experiences with inquiry in your subject, in your domain of expertise. So let me just give me some time to erase. And while I'm doing that, um, just notice that I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll put A, B, C, D, and then uh, just get a poll, and you'll fold your paper and show it to me when you've decided which one you most agree with. All right, so what I'd like you to do is to answer. So the question is, and you can only choose one of the, the four. Inquiry or active learning is one of these four. So I'll just repeat it. it. 
So A, and, and let me just back, the one that you feel most strongly about, or you, that you want me to know about today. So A, um, inquiry or active learning in the classroom is something I feel comfortable doing. B, something I know about in my discipline, so you know someone who does it, or you know um, literature in it, uh, in your discipline, or know of it, if it exists. Uh, C, something I don't believe I can do on my own. And D, know, to, know where to find the resources about teaching. So which one, so just choose the one that appeals to you right now. And then um, when you've chosen that, then fold the piece of paper. And um, I'll, when you all have had a chance to do this, um, then just hold up the letter that most applies to you. So some of you already do that. So you can do it quickly. And then I get an idea about where you're, OK. Everyone have a, an opinion? OK. OK, so, um, so most of you say A if you want to show your, your group. Which you, you, a lot of you said A, um, something you feel comfortable about doing. Um, and then I don't, I, did, there was a D, at least one D? OK. And uh, any C's or anyone brave enough to, OK. So what I'd like you to do is, um, OK, thank you for that, because that gives me a pretty good idea of where you're at. What I'd like you to do is, why don't we pull the, just we get rid of the space in front. You all move this way um, and discuss your reasoning with your groups about your choice. And then I'll wander around. So I teach English at a basic level, like a very basic level, and I usually just go on, like, there are tons of websites with different activities that you can use, especially when working with children, you have to switch between activities every, like, 15 to 20 minutes, otherwise you lose them, so I try to look for different activities when I can practice the same topic, same subject, so that they can process everything but that we just do different things, okay. like different. Great. So I, I am teaching several classes for geology majors. It's very funny to speak with this. <laughs> so the, the, the method that I use to teach is to is the Socratic method. OK, good. But I don't know. I, I get very interested in the active learning here because of the Proyecto 50 mm -hmm. activity, but I just want to know what it's about and how so can I use that's it. What the, that's the curriculum I'm going to show you is actually based on using the semi-Socratic yeah. questioning. Yeah, questioning. Yeah, it was designed the time. to do that. So you'll experience that as a student. I've been teaching for a long time. I've been teaching for a long time and since I teach languages it's really important to have not only active learning but also very well contextualized. You have to be able to take what you're teaching them to the real world so that they can actually like not learn it for just an exam to pass a course but actually like be able to keep that knowledge for a long period of time so that they can like scaffold all their, all their knowledge throughout the courses and okay. try to like make it like real life. So it seems like it's already built in to how your discipline is taught, at yes, least now, I, nowadays. Exactly, I'm like, when I started, I didn't know anything, okay. so I had to learn a lot in the process. And in the beginning, I would be very much like, I don't know, like, I guess what a school teacher would be like, A plus B equals C, and then like memorize and vocabulary and whatever. But then as I went on, and I'm like, I'm a dentist, mm -hmm. as like my occupation, my real occupation, I'm, like, I'm a dentist. And I was talking to them about like, normal classes were really hard for me, like going to lectures, because I wouldn't really process mm -hmm. what I was supposed to be learning until I got the opportunity to actually do them. For example, I would go to like surgery le lectures, and my teacher would talk and talk and talk, yeah. and I wouldn't get anything. Yeah. But then I would have to rotate at the clinic, and I would go into surgeries, and I would see what I was supposed to learn, and I was like, oh my god, totally. And so, as I started teaching English, I thought like, oh my god, that's so much more practical, and mm -hmm. if, if you get to do it like in a real life context, it's so much more memorable for you as yeah, a learning yeah. experience. And then you always try to do that with your students. And so 
Nowadays, I work a lot with like self-discovery, so I'll bring activities for them to like discover grammar or vocabulary by themselves, and then try to create activities where they can try to use and reproduce that language mm -hmm. in a more real-life setting. And if I have a, like a really good, like uh, hard-working group, mm -hmm. I'll even try to plan field trips. And okay. It's even nice. Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to break the discussion to, I didn't get to very many of you. Um, I heard um, some, some very interesting things that I think would, it benefited me, but I think the thing here is for me to help you help yourselves and to share. So what I'd like to do, like Rebecca did earlier, is you know, go from group to group and um, you know, who, I, I maybe choose you know, whoever feels most compelled to share his or her experience. And then maybe we can get, um, so in the back table back there, um, <coughs> is there any Bs? Anybody who said B? Is there was an A? Or what, what was your, can you show me your choices again? I don't remember, your carta? Ah, oh, say, okay. See, uh, do, you, do you feel comfortable um, discussing why you chose C? See, okay. Thank you. Well, we thought it might be C because um, the statement says inquiry or active learning. So we, we thought that we go to the classroom and we try to construct learning so the idea is that one teacher can go on his or her own and say something, but rather teachers would need to go to the classroom and construct okay. meaning. So they need the other part as the students. Okay. So, um, well, thanks for sharing that, being honest about it. Uh, is there anyone else in that group who'd like to share your, your reasoning by um, the rest, Jose? Any one of you in that? I still, I, I mean, I'm, you're going to experience something that um, in the role of the student that I've taught in like a, a different setting that, and you'll see, it's not, it's not, I haven't done it in this setting. So I'll just tell it, be honest, I've never done it in this setting. Um, it's always been everything perfectly the way for faculty development workshops. So. Um, It'll be fun. Okay, anyone, um, just, we need to have more viewpoints here. Okay, I was talking with him and when the two girls also. And uh, me, me, my class is numeric analysis, but I also teach uh, calculus. And I choose C because for me, I think it's very difficult to implement this kind of uh, active learning of this kind of uh, methodology in this kind of courses. And actually, in this course, in this, this semester, I, I try to, to implement this, this methodology with a professor. Um, we, uh, I, re, uh, I read, uh, I read a, a paper of active learning, um, and there I, I saw how to design the activities, how to make the question, the open question, to lead the, the student to, to, the, to the subject, the class. But when I design the activity, even though I mean, it's like uh, the normal class. I am the center of the, oh the yeah. course. And uh, usually when I write to my, cl my class, so I, I, I am there and the students are here. So even if and in the slides, I show the, the activity and there are the questions, but I say, okay, let's go to work in this question and go to, the, to, the stu to each student and I work with them, but at the end, who speak more during the class is, is me. I mean, it's the, it's the usual class, I guess. I don't know if it's, I can implement fully an after learning class. I don't know. I think I appreciate what you said. It takes a, a, an instructor, a teach classroom teacher, um, to teach. I can only speak of my field, which is physics, to teach. Um, active learning and the goal in physics or in the physics community 
is um, inquiry, because it's scientific inquiry, but inquiry-based, using experimentations, observations. So um, it, it can, you know, some confess that even after 20 years in the classroom. So that doesn't mean that, you know, to discourage you, like, uh, you know, that's beyond my teaching career. Uh, it's little changes can make a big difference. And what that difference is, how you measure it, is going to be up to you. Because you don't have a center for language necessarily, or for the languages, or for geology. Um, you can say, OK, I want to do this lesson on minerals. And here's a lesson. Can you train me how to use this? Can you train me how this would look in the classroom? Can you give me assessments? You know, you're going to have to do that on your own. But there's pr to offer hope. Small changes can make a difference. Um, and it may not be evident the first time you teach the course, the second time. So it's a hard thing. Um, people who've been doing it for years and years and years, still, and experts in the research part of it. So, but um, I'll put some provocative statements up here after you do the activity, okay? I don't wanna, I want you to be able to, to get in and do some scientific inquiry um, that's research-based. And I'll give more information if anybody wants. I just didn't want to spend a lot of time talking about my research background. Uh, I wanted you to experience it. Um, is there anyone else who would like to share out um, about what they're thinking, concerns? It may not necessarily be about this, but yes. Um, just a small comment. We were doubting a lot. Like, I guess it's because active learning might have a bit of everything. Exactly. But since we consider that active learning is about building knowledge together, then the C was the best option for us. Okay. But I think we agree that it has a bit of everything. Yes. Even within the physics education research community, which has a basis you know, of maybe 20, at least 20 years. So it's, it's more solid than, say, math education in the United States or chemistry education. Um, that there isn't a consensus. That even the language, does, it varies. Like, uh, you know, Rebecca uses a language based on her educational training. I'm discipline based, so I use it, I use the terminology so that another physicist, so I can help other physicists teach teachers or teach their undergraduates. So the language, um, you know, that's something you have to work out on your own and, um, and, and I'll try to stay true if you ask me if you don't understand a term that I, I say. So I put inquiry here just to you know, it's going to be scientific inquiry. That's what I'm expecting you to do. It's the role of the student. So thank you for that question. And um, what I'm going to show you is just one curriculum, one short period, done in this for professionals. Um, so, um, and it, it, it was based on at least a decade of research, active research. So um, you're not, it, it would be wonderful if something like that could be done for every subject and every course you taught. But this is what an example I can show you and what I know best. So what um, I'm going to do now is just to pause so that I can write something on the board. And then, um, then we'll move on. All right, I'm going to bring you together and I want to explain this because it's the pedagogical sequence that you will experience or get a taste of and it's not my I didn't make this up this is from my former research advisor at the University of Washington again if you want resources I will give them to you at the end um, but she's the foremost um, researcher in physics education in the United States and possibly in the world. Um, so I had the honor and opportunity to work under her. And so th what the way she phrases it, it's the pedagogical sequence for the, in the role of the student is illicit. And by that is we know as experienced instructors that where your students are probably going to have um, a problem because you've taught that class before and you kind of expect the next population of students coming in are going to have this similar, you know, maybe not the same, you know, distribution, but that comes up, uh, something that's important to you. 
So that's the illicit. It could take many forms. It could just be a one-on-one -on -one in your, your, your hours, with your office hours. Um, it could be, you don't want it to be on your exam. Like, like I didn't know they didn't understand this. I mean, that happens. But, but the, the intent here is to get it out. Get out what, um, and to craft an illicit task. Um, so you're going to be the subject, you're the subject expert. Um, cons and and uh, you, you're going to be, I'm going to elicit. You're going to be elicited. Okay, the next step is to confront. So um, this is usually an individual thing, you know, and then one, you know, one on one type of assessment or with students. Confront. From this research frame, is developing is pedagogy with a research-based curriculum is to confront in the, the where the students are working together in groups of four. Okay, so they're they're actually doing going through a worksheet, following the activities. Uh, re if, if I had a class of 24, I would have uh, two other people who understood what was elicited and what's going to be confronted, what questions to ask. So confront. That's when you actually have, where science uh, is, this is what I knew you predicted. Now you do it with a group of people in a friendly environment where you don't feel so like, I don't think I know understand science. Maybe I shouldn't be here. I mean, there's, I've been here, and it doesn't feel good. Um, so, and then they're confronted, and like, oh, oh. And they, they had already been thinking about the question. So the question is, something taken from the curriculum. Um, and then the next is resolve, because you want them to be able to leave a 50-minute session um, with having resolved as much as possible uh, a major misconception, we call it misconception, but it's a common, dis um, a common incorrect way of thinking about the concept or, or a process scale, graphing, calculus in the context of a physics course. And then after resolve, there's homework to help them reinforce. But this is the main cycle. It's elicit, to inform me, and to get the students curious about what's going to happen that week. So do it on Monday, say. And that's what's done at the University of Washington, where I came from. And then this is done in a 50-minute replacement of a recitation where the t physics TA is writing on the board. But the, those were replaced. Um, it was just a, a, a environmental. It was, it was just great that they were able to do that at that time. Because um, I'll go on on why that's better. And then resolve is within the, the um, activity. And my job, my role then is, is to ask questions. Your role is to accept that when you ask a question about the content, so you're going to be in the role of the student pretty soon. Uh, is that I may I apply what would be a, a semi-Socratic dialogue uh, or way of questioning. So by that, it's not pure Socratic method, which is just I ask you a question and go away and leave you. It's semi-Socratic in that it's guided and it's not so brutal and you get some feedback. But you know, if you don't understand why your equipment's working that way, I may say, have you tried this? Or um, I'll ask you a question, and then may wa and walk away because there's 20, at least 24 of you in here, and then go to the next group just to make sure everybody's on task. And um, so you in the role, just get, just be prepared that I may ask one of the questions. That I just need to know why this physics works out this way. I will either ask you to discuss it with somebody else or ask you another question, pose a question of your group to try experiment. Go get some material and do something new. Um, so we're going to do the illicit. Um, at the University of Washington, the students are given 10 minutes. It's in English. Um, so I don't know. I can read it um, if you want. It's really short. But let me hand it out because it has a diagram on it. So this is you as an individual, as a learner. Um, what I care about is the student gains, and this question has been given to thousands and thousands of students, uh, at least in the United States, and we know what students are going to say. We know what 
We've given it to faculty. We know what's faculty. We know what physics PhD students keep coming. We know what they're probably going to say. And it's, it's um, but they can overcome it quickly. And they do better, usually. You know, they do better. But it, it's, it's kinds of questions you're not used to probably answering. So, and again, it's in physical science. It's anonymous. Just um, explain your reasoning. That's really important. Explain your reasoning. So, um, I'll ask Miguel to pass them out when I can find them. Oh my God. So I did one. Okay, there's only one person. Oh, good. Okay. So, Kada. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they're being passed out. I'll, I'll, I'll read it in English once they're all out so that. So at the University of Washington, the way this works is that in a class of 150, um, the instructor has allowed my former advisor to have a graduate student administer what we call there a pretest. It's 10 minutes, students get credit for it. Um, it's on Monday mornings, right, or Monday, right at the beginning of class. Most people show up for it. That's how we collect the data on to do the research. Okay, everyone seems to have a copy. Okay, it's, um, are you going to translate it for us? Okay, so she's going to translate it. Thank you. No, if if you could just tran if you could yes. Thank you. For those of you who would like to, I have an apparatus. If you want to come and see what it looks like in real life, before, uh, if you haven't seen one, um, it's very simple equipment, but give you an idea of how the ball hangs if anybody wants to or just curious um, before you complete the illicit or if, if you want to come over here and you can get up if you want um, if you want to come up, up here and see or ask me additional questions so I'm gonna hold on to this so they're both they're both identical and yeah, somehow they're, right now they're neutral, but. Yeah. <laughs> so what will happen, so if they were charged, what would happen if I moved it closer and closer and closer and closer? And I'm not going to show you. Yep. Your job <laughs> is just to get out your ideas so you be more, you're more involved with, get, get do, you know, what you know. You know what you understand okay. and what you don't understand. Okay, so no hablas English, see? Okay. okay. Oh, did you want to ask a question? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you could. So. Do they have the same mask? Are they? Yes, the same identical. Size? Identical. Identical. Say they're identical, even though they're not. Identical, even though they don't look. Lo mismo. And I, yeah. Yeah. Not not now. No. 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 Oh yeah. So. You, you, what you're to think about is what if I move this one closer? But I'm not going to tell you now because you're supposed to get your ideas out. Oh. Hay una de ellas cargada. Okay, you said it. Yeah, yeah. Both, todos, lo mismo, exactamente. In the pregrupa, both es que si hay both alguna, son si hay alguna mismos, de las el, el mismo mask, mismo, um, the, the same pith, the ball, the bolipo is just the mismo, um, and the same charge. So tiene, no es un experimento. Tiene la misma carga. Es, todo es un. Ah, so, so this is not, 
you speak English or on vocal? So th this is, can, oh, can she'll translate. So this is just an apparatus to, to show you what it looks like. So for those who have not ever seen, uh, uh, a, it's called a pip. Um, but I'm not going to show you. You have to discover that on your own through the lesson. OK, yeah. See, but they're not charged right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the situation. Yeah, I know I should to make them uh, make them the same. You can you can do that, but la cosa es que no no puedes touch because we transfer the charge. So I just told you the answer. I'm not supposed to do that. Pensando, pensando cómo funciona. Yeah, so that's what I would tell my students. Cool. So, so vamos a, we're going to learn that in a minute. Okay. Or, well, in the okay. next Thank you. 50 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I lost my, um, could you put this back on me? I lost it. You can, okay, you can bend it, uh, you know. Is okay? Mm -hmm. See? Okay. So you've had plenty of time, I see. Um, so, um, so this would be a, a situation where I would not have the students in this set in this arrangement like you are right now. Um, but the idea is for you to familiarize. I'm not going to grade. Yes. Yeah, see. Um, I can tell you the research. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's enough. Um, it was enough to cause the research group to elicit that before the students went into the, their lesson. So typically it would be, so the question is, you know, um, how many students uh, would answer it correctly? Oh, no, for the lesson, for the pretest, I'm sorry. So for the illicit, what you're doing in your seats, I would not allow my students to be facing each other while they're doing. That's all I meant. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, then, okay. So some of you are curious about what the right answer is, and you just kind of naturally come up to me and expect me to tell you the answer. Um, so I, I need to take the role of... Uh, an inquiry-based or active learning, you know, student-centered learning facilitator now. So you're to work in groups of three to four. We'll pass out, I'll pass out, well, we'll pass out the, um, the lesson. It's more, it's six pages, but we're not going to do it all because some of it is not necessary. I just wanted to give you a taste of it. So pay attention, like here, I'll put the página. But uh, you know what, what you should do, and there's a point where it says stop, alto, pregunta uh, to uh, you know instructor to get your you know to check you out. Like I need to let you do it, and then come back, and then they raise their hands when you're ready to check out. But raise your hands if you have questions otherwise. So this is going to involve some simple equipment. Uh, which is always a good thing for people who pay for their own equipment for their own classroom, which we probably are many of you. And uh, I'll pass that out. I don't know if I have one for each group, but you'll have to share. It's, and um, it says on the instructions what to do, but I will guide you. I'll just come around and help you get do it so that you can get going. Um, the, the sheet, if you want to keep it, I'm not collecting it. Um, but we would collect those from the students on the Monday that they took the illicit, the pretest. And then the graduate students in that research group, we would work through lunch to get, um, or to get the data to the professors of the course. And then also when we trained the TAs to teach the students the next, the, the next few days. So, but I'm not collecting them. The students would not have copies of these. They would want to turn it in so that they would get credit. Because it's very hard to design these questions. If it gets out to a sorority or fraternity, it, it could skew the data. So we always change them, but this is a, a classic example. So. so if you're in a group where you don't have uh, someone who can um, read the, you know, translate for you, um, just 
raise your hand. I'll just go around. Is there? You're all good with the reading the English? Oh, okay. So if that's the case, I think uh, there's at least one or two of you in each group. Okay. Um, no, I think I'm... Yeah. Um. Okay, so for each group of four, um, they get um, what I don't know if I'm going to have enough, but just each. <laughs> oh, you have one already. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you guys get a tape? No. Not yet. Okay, but this is what you're going to need. Okay. Now, yes, yeah, you could. You'll have to do another one. Yeah, because it's really important that the um, that the. Don't worry about it. I I have to do them all over again. So. And then you could, yeah. It's pretty sensitive to um, the oils on your skin. So. Oh uh, no, not this. On the key, on the, yeah. And then you got the handle. And then with the pen, yeah, go ahead and you can do that. And then with the pen, or a pen, put uh, B. That's your bottom. Uh -huh. and, then, and then put the other one. Maybe you can show them what you're doing. Uh, B for bottom. Bajo. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Then I'm sorry. So leave that there. But don't, are we supposed to like have handles on both sides? No. Did you, you, this is good. This okay. will work. Okay. Then put the other one without uh -huh. taking this one off. Uh -huh. uh, misma length. Uh -huh. And then a little handle here. And then that'll. Put it on top of that one? Exactly the same? Uh, yeah. About the same length. Yeah. You can cut it and then just. And then, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to see that it's even the, okay, you got a handle. Okay, yeah. then this one's the top mm -hmm. for, como se dice top in Spanish? Arriba. 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 Y bajo. Abajo. Or abajo. Abajo. Okay. Debajo. Okay. So then each one of you are going to do one, okay? And like you can help each other out if you have the you have the technique pretty well. So, <laughs> just for at the interest of time, and then um, when you all have done that, when they've all done that, then what you want to do is take the entire yeah touch it because we want it uh -huh. to be um, touched. <laughs> I can only say that. But yeah, yeah, this is pretty good. You don't want it to. And then the next step is to use your handles. Uh -huh. And this is you may have to do this more than once. Uh -huh. You know, then just both of them. You yeah, and I'm not going to do that because. Uh -huh. And then it then do what it says. I'll let you be the guide uh -huh. for the group. Okay. So you have to put on something like support. Uh, but you're not going to. Um, what you <laughs> you because I don't have that. <laughs> but what you can do is yeah the yes. the sticky yeah. Uh -huh. And you just be careful. It's far enough from because it may, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can all share that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, press piece. Yeah. Yeah. That's just exactly what she said. And then it'll tell you to separate them. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to separate them. You want to keep them yeah. like that. Okay. For the first part. Yes. So you do some exploration. Do we all do one? Um, you all have to produce your own thing like that, but she doesn't want to take hers off yet. Um, no, I don't. No, wait until they all have theirs. I'm sorry. So, so everyone has exactly like hers, and you can make it. And then keep them down. She's going to take hers off, and then um, you can use hers, but keep yours without. Okay. Are you with somebody? I'm just observing. 
Do you want to be a learning assistant? <laughs> That's what happens to the learning. Okay. Um, so, um, is your is your back are you background science, engineering? Okay. Did you see the pretest? Did you? Okay, that's just to show people who don't, and don't even know what the, yeah, th so, but this is really the illicit, you know, so, um, this is a, an example. Yeah, why don't you think about what the questions are gonna, that are going to come, and then we'll put you with a group. Okay. I, any group need help? It may take a many time, uh, a few times to do it, uh, because of the instructions may not be the type of instructions that you Okay, so, so you have to, okay, so what did you, what do you got? So on the, <laughs> the first time we try, they repel each other, but the mm -hmm. second time they attract each did other. You, did you prepare, I'm going to say prepare, the tapes the same way the second time as you did the first time? Yes. I think we did, I'm not sure. Because and did you keep the same top, the same top, and the same bottom, the same bottom? Okay. So show me what you did. Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens this time. This is rebellion. Yeah. Okay. So that's a beautiful experiment, but that is not the experiment oh that okay. I wanted you to. <laughs> that's okay. You have time. Oh your yeah, faculty. Faculty. <laughs> you, you, this is your perk for. You can do. You know, you're. But you're doing your inqu You're doing inquiry, and you're questioning, like yeah. did it, and you're checking, you're seeing it does, <laughs> using the, l l that's awesome. Okay, so, so, okay, so, okay, so the tape, I'll show you what, um, what you were, how you were supposed to prepare the tape. And, and maybe you did some of this, but um, each one of you should do it, or just do at least two, so one other person. So really all the students would have to do their own, but if you just want to do two, because it doesn't work on each time. So what you need to do is cut this and not let it touch, which you may have done. And that's because we have oils on our hands, and that affects it. That's all I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> the experiment doesn't. And then uh. I'm not doing it the best way because I'm touching it. But, yeah, okay. I, I think it'll still be good because this tape is excellent for this. Okay, then press that down with your hand. Yes, yeah, And then the other one about the same length. Okay, and then with your pen, with your pen, label this um, B for uh, de bajo, B, B for de bajo. Okay, and then I'm going to, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so then I'll, I'll let you do this, but I'm gonna show you. And then uh, what I would do is, and I'm not gonna put this here and then put um, um, a bajo or whatever, the top, top, see, T, and then press it. And then, as a, as a unit, pull it, and then do what it says. It's bring a pen, bring your hand close to it, and then hang it from here. And then those other ones, did I take them? Okay. Yeah, but don't use those other ones. Before. Again, just, okay. Okay, yeah? Okay. Another one here? Yeah. Yeah. And label it top so that you can then know. Okay. Preguntas? Do you think you're doing it as the way it's described? Because yeah, some people were, I mean, it's, it's understandable. Okay. It's entertaining. entertaining? Okay. What, so what, what do you have there? We're here, how we're trying to understand how the distance between the, the tapes um, affect the, the interaction. So what's so happening? They, uh, Si, si la separo. Yeah. Ocurre que es que cuando las acerco se repelen, se separan. Pero ya después cuando las las la alejo <coughs> ya ya no se juntan las cargas, no hay interacción entre las cargas. Okay, so what do you mean? O sea, tienen que estar cerca una de la otra para poder que generen interacción una entre la otra. Okay, bueno. Okay, I am. Más o menos. Well, okay. So. <laughs> 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 
I'm trying to figure out how to say this diplomatically. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, no, no, it's, it's, uh, okay, are, are you a science background? Uh, is you, I forget, you're, no, okay. No, Okay, so you were, you were talking like a scientist, that's what I asked. So, uh, como a, a scientist, a physicist would, may say the same. Oh, physics? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eh, me gustaba la física cuando estudiaba en secundaria, oh, okay. entonces de pronto me acuerdo okay. de cositas. No sé si está bien. Excelente. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so this is an example where I can say, um, in your role as a student right now, um, is to put all your prior knowledge and vocabulary. So what you said by an interaction has a specific meaning in physics. So an interaction could be. I'm touching her. I'm touching her. Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean, like, I'm touching her. Es, es una, uh, oh, es un force. Oh, es un, it, it, an example of an interaction. Okay, okay. So, or I could touch this. Uh, I could touch myself. I know about touching interactions. Those are um, a specific class, a Newtonian physics. But these aren't even touching. Can we call it the same? Yeah. So it brings up a lot of different questions. So, but the, you know something's happening. And that's what I would want my students to know. And you're making observations. And you all are convinced that there was something when you brought the tapes, when you changed the distance, that something was happening, some phenomena that was causing it. Maybe, you'd, okay. Okay, sí. that's the most important thing. So um, is, is the observation and how you measure it, your metric. Um, it may be different, but how it looks, the angle, um, the deflection, is that's a nice one to use. Ocurren algunos comportamientos al acercar y al alejarlo. Entonces es muy divertido poder ver la, esos comportamientos de las cintas al, al acercarse y al alejarse. Entonces hay una fuerza, hay una distancia. Entonces en solo dos trozos de cinta puede uno observar muchas cosas. Es divertido. Okay, so at this point in the course, the students who would, these are designed for, they would have had Newtonian physics. They would have covered interactions in detail. So it would have, I would have allowed the student to say force. Um, but because you're not all, because you're not specialists in science, then, you know, use the words that make sense to you. <laughs> to you. Um, and I won't, you know, force, I mean, that's a correct use of the term. But um, um, anyway. Um, Okay, that's a wonderful experiment. You had, you seem to be systematic. You know, you did a procedure. Did you did you do it more than once? Yeah. Okay. So you had okay, uh, and you made, and you got reproducible, like, the same results more or less, same conclusion. Okay. Uh, so, that's like doing science. Yeah, I mean that is doing science. Okay. So that's wonderful. Uh, the next. But however, you didn't do the experiment. I don't think you did this. Did you do? Did you do a top tape at a bottom? Oh, okay. What happened to them? Okay. And then did you put bring a hand or a pen towards it? Yes. What happened? What happened? They they they. What did they do? They moved to the opposite side, one from each other. So an attraction no. or repulsion like you experience with magnets? Yeah. Something like that that you've seen before? Okay. Okay, so you had the two pieces together. And then uh, I just, yeah, this is, so you had to t pretend, so two pieces um, on top of each other? Okay. Pues, I ah, guess, no, los why don't we do por the experiment? Colocamos una por separado. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's okay. I, it's, you're, not, you're not special in that way. So start, you're going to start over because 
the material matters. I was saying how equipment matters. <laughs> this this tape, I had, you know, bring from the United States, this specific tape for, to do this experiment because teachers, teachers have not known, know that this works. Yeah, so it, well, yeah, I don't know why it's called magic tape, but yeah, it works really well from physics, this kind of physics experiment. So we'll start over. Yeah? 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 Okay. okay. Um, I'll guide you through. So the primera is to get the piece about 20, uh, 15 centimeters. We'll use his table. Okay. And try not to touch it, but, you know, we have, it's forgivable in that way. Uh, probably. Okay. Uh, sticky side down. Yeah? Okay, then make a, what they call a handle. So by kind of making this go, my hands aren't so good. So that it's easier to separate them. And then mark this one um, B for abajo or underneath. B, abajo, yeah, B, B, because that's what it says in here. B for abajo, and then uh, this. With the magic tape. Ma oh, yeah. Is it yeah. Yeah, that's not something you would normally do. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You guys are so um, careful. <laughs> but, but it's really cool that even though they did the different experiments, that you guys were actually making the observations and being systematic. Okay, the same thing, and because you're probably going to have to do this again. Because once it touches your hands, after you do separate them, it, it, it changes. So you have yeah. to reproduce, yeah, have it to have the, okay, then put uh, there or top. Okay, and then, uh, I'm just going to do it. I, stu I should not be doing this for you. I mean, I'm saying as a, my role as a teacher, but because you're professional, so. And then pull it apart. I don't think there. You may have to do this again, but okay. So this is, and then I'm going to put it here. Carefully keeping it away from other things. As you can do it. I mean, you probably should. I mean, just for your own good. I, I shouldn't. I'm doing too much talking. Okay. And then bring something. Yeah. With, yeah. What happened? Okay, see if you could, if there's some attraction. I, I go for that word, I like that word. Okay, I try something else like um, something, well, yeah, your phone or, or uh, ooh, whoa. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, hola? So I didn't see what you, you produced, you're pretty confident that you produced uh, the top tape and the bottom tape, like it was described there, because uh, not because some people were doing a different experiment, which was fine. Um, <laughs> okay, did you do did you do two and sema? Yes. Okay, and so you have a top and a bottom, and you have there's two. okay. And we notice that once we approach the, I mean, the T, for instance. Mm -hmm. What I mean is that when they are the same letters, T and yeah. T, they repel uh -huh. each other. When the letter is different, T or B, they tend to get closer, they attract. Awesome. What about um, the question about you know, bringing them closer and further apart? Um, did you notice a difference in how they, what, do you, what did you observe when you brought uh, whatever combination, two tapes towards each other? What did you see? With the first part, we noticed that they tend to be to have more attraction in the end of the the the, the final part okay. of the tape, not in this place, but in here. It okay. attracts more. Okay. So, do you have uh, does any any to account for that? Why it would be like there would be this localized? Why it would be so different in one place than another? <laughs> okay, but you observed that that had happened. Yeah, it happened. Okay. Were there any assumptions you were making about the tape? You know, like... I don't know, I'm just inventing here. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Out of my league. Yeah, but way out of my league. You're you're among everyone's the same. Okay. Even the scientists. So it's it, it, like it is more charged, like at the end of the the the, the yeah. date. Bless you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that could explain, or he, he has a reasonable hy um, reas uh, hypothesis as to, or conclusion that maybe the charge isn't totally localized. Yeah. Or maybe because there was nothing making contact on it. Or maybe we maybe he touched that part more and got oils on his hand and somehow that changed the interaction. Um, that's a good one. But but it could be any. I don't know. Could be because yeah. when we take off the the tape. The those are the parts that we touch all the time. The the ends. So mm -hmm. it is a possibility. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. I am. Haven't gotten to all of you. Is anyone, anyone ready for the checkout? Really? Ox? Okay. Okay. I'll be there. I need to. Um, in the meanwhile. Okay. I'll, I'll. I promise. I'll be right back. Okay. This. The. The. Oh. Yeah. Why don't you continue? Okay. Okay, I'll give you something to do that'll keep you. <laughs> so on the second, on the second page, 72, um, it asks you to get some equipment that I have modifications for. So it asks for a, a acrylic rod and a piece of wood, I mean wool. And so what I have is, um, I'm going to have you blow up a balloon. You can blow up two, but probably one is enough. Blow up a balloon, and then I have some felt that you can rub. Or you can do the balloon on, but I don't know, uh, and see it, it's it, the humidity, the amount of look, uh, water in the air here in Medellin is um, higher. It, it's just, but I was able to get it to work. You just have to make very, very careful observations to see little changes. If okay, so we're gonna tr kind of treat. I'm, I'm just modifying it because I didn't have the rods. Okay, so balloons. Oh, that's okay. I have enough. Whoever wants to blow that up. And here's the felt. You you kind of wanted to have it pretty full, kind of tight, you know, but when you not loose. All right, raise raise your hand if you've gotten to the second page where it asks you to obtain an acrylic rod and okay so we we have a modification and uh, we'll have uh, the object and which is going to be a blown balloon and um, felt so if you're ready why don't you come up here and get your own equipment So, um, did the balloon, um, yeah, well, why don't you take two balloons and two felt, well, I'm sorry, just one of each. One felt, one balloon, and there's a bag of the balloons uh, there. Okay, um, were you able to... Okay, you want to try the tapes yourself? You, you, okay. Okay. So what I found was that. Um, Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so yeah, just, yeah. Just throw an example. Okay, next example. example you don't allow the time for them to actually first guess what's going to happen and mm -hmm. see what's if they the guess what's going to I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Like the acrylic rod, what will we use? Like a pen? Oh, no, it's the blown balloon. Do you have a balloon? Yeah. Yes. That's going to be your acrylic rod. Yes, okay. I didn't tell you. And then that's the thing you rub it. And try to be local when you rub it. You're just going to. 
Because, yeah, you just a little area. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, you need to blow it. Yeah. You could use your hair if you want, but I don't recommend that. Um, so this is not as good as using your hair, pelo pelo, but um, just. The acrylic rods are kind of expensive. And I'm not in a home university right now, <laughs> so I didn't uh, get a chance to. Like this? Yeah, keep on, yeah. And then, but you, you'll have to, if it's the humidity, the water and the air really affects it. It's not, this is not the best environment for it. But do you have your tapes? Uh, we kind of like them. But we okay, do why don't you make, again. yeah, you can do it quickly. And then the charge will dissipate quickly. So you might want to just wait until you're ready to do it. And then you go more, and then, and then, <laughs> and just to play with it rather than you can't, you're not going to be able to do exactly what it, what it says there. Just try different areas, you know, explore it. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it makes it it makes it more it makes it more difficult to charge. So it's kind of like an a friction friction effect. So, so the effect of the charging that it it gets in yeah in the end the effectively oh, and in the air it you get leakage of like when you rub you're changing something has happening you can't see it but you're changing it and um, the fact that there's air the water in the air dissipates the strength of that like it goes away so yeah. so you're not so at this point it's kind of all hell breaks loose <laughs> with the balloon well because I'm not using the same equipment but what I you're not going to be able to do exactly what's on there because you have a sh some shaped uh, you can get another balloon and design your own experiments um, uh, but yeah to see what um, if that if we knew the charge on the balloon that well first of all do you believe that there's excess charge on the balloon what evidence do you have for that? You feel the static. You feel the static. <laughs> so how do you know that it's not your head, your hair that's charged and that's not charged? Okay. And you know that the tapes are and so then going on with this semi-socratic. So how do you know that those are, what evidence do you have for, um, but it, I'm not gonna make you do the whole experiment over verb orally, you know. Um, okay, so try to answer as many of the questions, like the distance, the distribution. Some, this group noticed that when they were just doing the two tapes together, that it, there was, seemed to be a, a localized I interaction, or. It wasn't like there, there was something happening at the bottom that they felt was important to mention in their observations. So, you know, I said, well, how might you account? Just an idea. How might you account for a prediction? So, do you think this has both positive and negative? Uh, well, that's, do we, uh, we relate this with a magnet? An analogy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. When it was, because when we took the first one, it wasn't it, it wasn't interacting with anything, and then we used this one, and it started to interact. So we okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So what? I, but what I was going to start if if. Okay, so she's made a compelling are you, argument. You've made the experiments. You all agree. Good consensus. Um, so there's excess charge on that when you rub the balloon, the rubber, we would say, and the felt. So um, there's also excess charge in there, but it doesn't. We do, can't. Yeah, there is. Oh, did you? Can 
Can I borrow your felt? Okay. It attracted? Should it attract? Oh, okay. Well, it, it seems to be... Oh, no, it was just the wind? Okay. Okay. So this one... Okay, okay. Yeah, well, what's happening? Wh do you know what what's going on with your charge? Or do you feel confident that you have different opposite kind of charges here or any charge there or do you want to I, I guess I don't want you to, to do experience if you don't feel comfortable with you know that they're working anymore I guess discharge okay 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 so this this felt hasn't rubbed a balloon for a long time so I'm going to say it's essentially neutral. What should happen when I bring it um, close to the balloon? And I'm, I'm going to do it but this way. Right. And this is, I would say, electrically neutral. OK. What, what do you predict to happen? OK. OK. We OK. <laughs> do you, you want to do it again so they can see it? Or? Yeah. Her eyes lit up. Yeah, I'll rub my, I'll get it all, I'm not, I'm just getting it um, neutral, it uh, discharging. Ah, <laughs> okay. Did you, are you convinced that, so this is neutral. Try something, um, so that is probably neutral, it could be neutral, but I know this is neutral. So it, that's got to have charge. Yeah. 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 Because this, if they were both neutral, if you, we wouldn't expect them to attract. Yeah. No. So. So two things that are neutral, electrically neutral, won't interact, or we don't observe that from our naked our eyes. But something that's charged attracts yeah. so the the this tutorial we're not going to finish it so um that was that would have been a very important um observation it's not it's written at the i, I don't even it was kind of part of the pretest um but it provides a, mo a model for for engineering students to explain this but not for a sheet like this, they talk about a ball. So it's a neutral ball, um, and it, it pretend, you know, like in, we make approximations sometimes in our fields, that there's, po it's neutral, but it has positive on this side and negative on this side. It's contrived, it's not physical, but pretend that. And, um, well, it kind of is, but if you bring, then we would ask them to see if they understood the lesson, because they would have worked through more, and they would have had lecture on it already. Um, then if you bring a top tape, you know, your tape, close to it, it would, you'd expect it to, if it's electrically neutral, so far you've seen that it would attract, even though it was electrically neutral. But it, it's, it was a model to say, well, this charge, this would be like if the, her tape is top, this is bottom, um, say, and the top is, the top's kind of charge is going to want to be further away if it's metal able to do that or even if it's plastic but if it's doesn't it. so it's sep there's separation that we don't see but a model to account for that mathematically and conceptually so that would be the goal I would want my students to be able to be there close enough at the end of the period so they could go home and do it like because they would have had there's a lot of math in there that I would I didn't want to do it's, it's not worth it um, but you guys but you've done the exploration and that's I'm very pleased and you're doing the scientific thing. So it didn't matter that you, you're not going to, you know, we did two pages if some people did more. But, uh, but that's the idea is the experience. OK, thank you. OK, so did you, um, were you, did you inquire while I was gone? Did you, 
explore. What did you What did you find out? Well, two kids were together. Uh, what? What did they were together? They. Towards the balloon. Okay. Like then we separated the tapes, and then the bottom tape. Was it the bottom tape? It will be no, drawn. The bottom one would repel, and the top one would like. Okay. One would be repelled, and one would be drawn towards the balloon. So your question is why? They have a different charge. Okay, so there's something there that that is similar. When you when you brought two top tapes together, you saw them. Um, what happened? What did you observe, remember observing? Two of the same two T's together. Did they attract, repel, or do nothing? When we had the same type of tapes, yeah. they would attract each other. Repel. Okay. No, the opposite. Repel. The two. T uh, the they would go when like we had like the same type of tapes, like top and top, they would repel each other, and or bottom, bottom bottom, they would repel. But when we had top and bottom, they would attract each other. Okay. So. Um, so there was just kind of something common that you could predict. Like if I said. Here's two tapes that were prepared similarly, exactly mm -hmm. the same, mm -hmm. like your two tapes and you know, and my two tapes. Um, if I bring two of them together mm -hmm. without telling, you know, that they were similarly made, mm -hmm. you'd expect them to behave like repel because they're like they're the same quantity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you brought the top, if you can remember, when you brought the top tape close to the charged balloon, mm -hmm. um, what can you say about? And they're, they're trying to answer, maybe you said that tell you about how this is behaving compared to your top tape. Is it behaving like a top tape or a bottom tape? Like a bottom tape. Okay. 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 No, <laughs> did it? Did like a bottom tape, yes. Yeah. No, it, I think it would be bottom because like when we put the top tape, they would attract each other. So it would be like, di when we had the, the two tapes, top bottom. and bottom, yeah. they would attract each other. Yeah. When we put the top tape with the balloon, it will happen the same. So the balloon would act as the bottom tape. Okay, both times. I think so. Yeah. No, it, it didn't work. So this should. But when we put the bottom tape, the balloon repelled the tape. So you got to put. So it would be like bottom and bottom. And then when you brought like the top tape, did it attract? Like at the same time, both tapes. No, it's just separately. No, separately, like top bottom would attract to the balloon, uh -huh. but the bottom tape would repel the balloon, or it would be repelled by the balloon. Okay, so you have the beginnings. This would not be the end of a, of a dialogue with a student group, uh -huh. um, but the beginnings of like, maybe we should investigate this further, um, because you did see t two different effects. Mm -hmm. um, but I in one case, your hypothesis might be, well, it's behaving, the bottom tape or top tape, is, be is repelling, the balloon, so therefore, there's got to be some charge on there because mm -hmm. they're repelling. Yeah. So it's acting, it behaving like that kind of tape. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you have to confirm by seeing if it attracts the top tape. Mm -hmm. And if you, that would be say, I would say, okay, do that and to con prove to me that, convince me that you're, you've, you've got the, mm -hmm. the, right. uh, the proper observations yeah. of the experimental setup. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know I didn't get to all your groups. Um, did I'll just come by and just check to see. Um, I, I had promised them, and uh, um, but I'll be back with you because I don't think I spent any time. Okay, so. So we practiced the mm -hmm. and it, it repelled the T one, the top one, uh -huh. and attracts the bottom one. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> Is okay, yes. it is, yeah. Uh, you didn't need to know that, but, but <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's, it's our conclusion. Yeah. Because at, at to repel the tea, the, the top of the I don't know, at some point, yeah, we... Oh, because by the behavior. So I've, I had brought the acrylic rod and the fur, or an amber rod and silk. I could produce those because of the materials. The, and the combination, like silk and amber or whatever, uh -huh. it, 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 it makes, one of them has an affinity to be negative and therefore leaving the other one to have an affinity to be negative. So the one that you're kind of like charging to use as your object to, to test yeah. with, um, it could be either one. It just depends on the relative affinities or des well, I'll say desire, but that, that they, would, so when they would become negative. When it's negative, does it mean that I, still 
electrons from it? Uh, that it has more, in excess. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I charge it. I, like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so in <laughs> physics, we think of the uh, one way to think of, yeah. We would typically say that the electrons are the ones that move, like current in a wire. But, so that's why I said it that way. But okay. in the end, the net result is that there was an excess of negative, of some type of charge in her, and it behaved like a bottom tape or a top tape. Okay. Well, like well, one uh, of your as like a top. Okay. So that means, and if I tell you that that's negative charge, then then you could say I produced by doing this experiment with this tape. Um, the top tape is therefore negative. I'll let you and yeah, and positive. And positive. But together they were what do you neutral. Mean oh, okay. Neutral <laughs> when you started out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so there's just so much more that we could do with students, but, yeah, but they would have to go through this in 50 minutes. 50 minutes. <laughs> so we're, and so there's three of us, and we're like... So, but do you use these two together? I mean, yeah. like, do they do this by their own, and they, and yeah. they discuss No, they do this in class under supervision. Because this, and it doesn't have to be that way, but because my, the, the research group that developed these, we were collecting data because we do research. So we used this as a way to inform how to make these better for okay. the students. Um, and then we would do post tests too, because we had to document for a different reason, you know, because that's our research field um, okay. to see if it didn't. And if it didn't work, we need to let people know too, because <laughs> we don't want them to do the same thing wrong, you know, not wrong, but that is not helping. Okay, do you know what time it is? Or how many more minutes? Oh, I have 50 minutes, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to um, stop, even though I'm having really interesting conversations. Um, and I'll come back, I'll come back and I promise. Um, I wanted to allow some time for um, discussions. Um, and maybe, you know, you're, I don't even, I, I don't know what you need. I think that, I mean, you engaged. Um, you know, I, I know that you don't, you didn't have, you don't have, or many of you do not have the resources that I had. And I spent, you know, not to brag, but to give uh, context, you know, I was a graduate student. I did research on things like this. That was my thesis. So I, that's uh, my life for a long time. Um, and then I became a research prof a professor, and that's what my scholarly, collect data, um, work with other professors who would let, allow me to use their class. Because we don't, in our, my field, we don't like say, I'm gonna teach two sec, one, two, I'm teaching one section I'm gonna give them with some people in education called the treatment, like this. And then I'm, I'm not gonna do that with my other, my other. We don't do this more like, uh, you know, the doctor philosophy. If I'm gonna do this, you know, I wanna do it for all my students, you know, in, if, in one subject, if I could do that. I might not do it for all the classes that I teach that semester, but for one. Um, so, um, but, so the control could be one of my colleagues who doesn't wanna do this, but says, oh, my students know some of the questions that you were able, you answered, and to explain it, and if I give a test on his, I mean, many times it's not, it just, I'll just give you a conclusion and it'll be up to you to look up the least, uh, look me up and find and get the research, the, the evidence, because this is in, scho in scholarship and I'm just telling you. Um, but I, I want to um, just take a moment, I'll let you collect your thoughts. I want, I have one commitment here and then I'm going to write up some provocative statements up here. I'm not going to back them up other than you, you trusting me that this is coming from my research um, background and group. And again, if you have want resources and you want to learn more about these generalizations that, then, that I, I would bet good money on um, for myself, I know what students are going to have problems with in this, this, this exercise, um, then, um, then do so. I just don't want to bore you all with technical things that you may not even be interested in and may not be relevant to you. That's all. So I'll give you a couple minutes just to collect, but stay in your groups and then I'll put the provocative questions up there and um, see what, if that can help you or help me help you. Just I have only 50 more minutes with you. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> we think that 
We have the letter T is positive and letter B is negative. Is okay. Yes. Okay. And how do you know that the top one was? Po how do you know that it could have been the other way around? One positive. We made the analogy that the glass rod is positively charged with rubber when rubber with silk, so we imagine that this, this is the silk and this is the glass. Oh, so you assumed so it would be the same? We assume that this is going to okay. be positive. Okay, so the um, fur with the acrylic is given to you as being positive? Yeah. Okay, I just... Yes, the acrylic oh, rod okay. was, was changed by the balloon. So conventionally, a glass rod is said to be positively charged yeah. when rubs. So okay, glass rod. Okay, yes. not acrylic. But okay, so it does matter. It does matter what the object, the two objects that are being rubbed. So rubber, when you rub it with um, felt, actually has an affinity um, to disposed or an affinity to be net to um, transfer a net a negative. But it doesn't matter. You know, as long as you were yeah. using, you know. A mo you you know you're using a model or a, a, a declarative knowledge, yeah. a fact, yeah. yeah. But then no, it's okay, and I didn't get to you. But that's awesome that you were able to uh, apply that here. Um, but yeah, it, it you know it, physicists we have to look up unless that's in a research area, you know like no. So if you were a, a, a physicist or teaching would have to know positive or negative. But did you, you were able, you're convinced that you were able to charge this. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. So that's simple equipment. Yeah. The um, glass rods and the acrylic rods are very expensive. Yeah. So I did, and I don't affiliate with the university right any, right now. So I, even in the humidity here, you were able to do it. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So that's, I learned that from working with you. <laughs> so thank you. I'm so glad you came. <laughs> Okay, the eraser, I could use this. Oh. Okay, so I promised um, a provocative question or statement. This is not my, f my statement. Again, it, it's somebody who's spent a lot more time doing this research than me. Um, so I will go ahead and read what it says. Teaching by telling is an, sorry, is an, an, or a, ineffective, not effective, um, for most students, for most students. So teaching by telling, teaching by just being up here and just, you know, talking to you and having you take notes or whatever you do in a lecture situation. Um, so in your groups, discuss, um, you know, whether you strongly agree with that or um, how, what effect does that have on your teaching, how you think looking forward? Nothing? It may be nothing. I, I, so, um, or how you might want to abide by this in your class. How do you think you might be able to do it? Um, it, just a small thing. I mean, not like I'm going to change my entire course. Um, so, is I don't know. I assume. Yeah, well, I'll just ask you because you're looking at me. Um, is that a provocative question? Is that something that's like, yeah, you could say, yeah. I want to say as me. You know, I I would say, duh. Doesn't you know everybody know that? Do you feel kind of like, doesn't everybody know that? Why is she even writing that up? Is that, or you might feel like. Um, Show me the evidence. I know if I teach biology by lecturing, my students learn. You know, my subject. I'm diff My subject is different. My students are different. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I think it also depends on on who's teaching and what's teaching because uh, normally I will use another strategy. But I used to have this teacher at school mm -hmm. who was really good, really, I mean, it may be my best memory from school. Mm -hmm. And he was my history mm -hmm. uh, professor. And what will he will do would be just tell us stories. Mm -hmm. But it's w it was different because it wasn't like a teacher standing there and just t speaking and speaking about anything. He was 
actually telling stories and that was really nice. It was like your grandparent <laughs> telling you a story. So I think it depends on what you're doing and how you do it. Yeah, yeah, I would say, um, uh, I would say that, well, it's the history is interesting for me because I'm, I'm no longer a professor. So just, I've um, totally changed fields um, recently and so I'm an artist in training artist and my interest is in mu museology but I also work uh, based on my grant writing as a professor I work for a nonprofit in Seattle who fund who support photography and filmmaking so I'm learning about film uh, for, uh, storytelling and how the visual the photography the film it is it's a different um, it's a different way of communicating or what to even to evoke feelings is different than uh, physics where, I mean, you know, but I know I understand. I, I understand from my own personal experience being new to storytelling, that it's not the same, yeah. Um, anybody else want to say? Is this something that, okay, yeah. It's something I would have conflict with in a way that mm -hmm. you cannot teach someone how to use higher order thinking skills by just standing up in front of them and speaking or talking about a subject. You have to actually bring some examples or some exercises where students are forced to do this. Otherwise, in a test, if you ask them to work on synthesizing or analyzing something, they're not going to be able to do it if all you do is stand there and talk. Right. That's so my conflict with this. Um, with by teaching by telling. Yeah. So you would agree that it's probably not an effective. Yes. Okay. So you would. Okay. So you're. Okay. So you're. I. 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 I um, feel the same way as you do, and especially in science, where it's it's you know inquiry. We want to teach them and evidence and collab. There's like Rebecca was talking about hidden um, agenda or hidden curriculum. I mean, if the focus of my research is find out what they know and don't know. What do we want? Well, first of all, what do we want them to know? What can they or cannot do? Um, and then teach accordingly and my research group which is um, within the physics education research um, community in the United States which isn't that large I mean Rebecca and Jeff are like cousins I mean because there's not very many faculty who train people to be like us so but they're each group has a different approach mine was get the collect the data um, not using edu we don't I, I my uh, research approach approach is not Educa using education. Not that, it's, that there isn't a use for it, but um, what I can bring in is my understanding of physics. And I need to be and be in a department of physics. That was in my previous life. Because I need to inform my physics colleagues how to teach physics if they're willing, if they're willing. And um, we have, to, in the United States, all departments teach the subject um, for secondary high school for um, physics, my department would have to teach our elementary or our t teachers in the, you know, who are getting education degrees to be teacher, high school teachers in the public school. Um, and, and it's just any of them who have no, don't even, it's not that they, they think this is good. I mean, they think this is, they, they would argue against this because they teach the honor students. Or like, you know, you, you're, I mean, I would say, you, we all who've made it this far in uh, our careers and in academia, um, we're probably the ones that lecture could work for. And one explanation is that because we already knew what questions to ask and we already knew what we knew, what we, know, we knew and we didn't know, or how to ask ourselves. So that's kind of the understanding of our own learning, uh, which there's fields of research for that um, in science education. So, um, Okay, so well, that's it's it's that's it makes me feel good that you, no one necessarily thinks that that is that's a, not a new idea. So um, another provocative um, thing, and I'll just just say it, and that had to do with so somebody had a, maybe it was your comment, but um, so I'm just going to list some things of what one might think would improve student learning. Okay, so competency of the instructor in his or her subject area. 
You all agree? I'm, yeah, you need to be competent. Uh, charisma, personality. I think that's important in using a, a researcher based, pro doing pre testing and post testing. So, using evidence based. Do you think that the personality of the instructor matters? in getting a better, alone, all of the things being equal, okay, as a variable. So if some of you do, okay, uh, or are willing to say you do, um, what are the other things that you could think? Oh, whether you're teaching honors or general s students who just need to take the English or the science for their, for their education. So do you think that it matters what your student population is um, on what they can learn? Well, yeah, definitely. Curriculum has to be designed to address that. Um, what are some of the other things that people, do you have any other ideas of what, var what variables could affect um, student outcomes? Uh, uh, everything, you know, one thing different, everything else the same. Yes. Do you think, uh, or like in your experience, do you think class size matters? Oh, good, yes. Oh, so class size, small class, large size, you know, everyone, it could be, an, you know, an opinion. So what I would say that only in physics, because that's what I know best, is that um, definitely competency, pr proficiency of the instructor, but um, the personality is not really, does not really affect the student outcomes. The, st the, the instructor that, doesn't, that the students don't like, for whatever reason, may, may have laid larger gains than the Harvard, I don't know if you've heard of Eric Mazur? No, that's okay. Okay, so he's just very charismatic and, and public about his physics, teaching physics. Someone who's very charismatic, he realized, a Harvard professor, he realized in teaching his physics that his students loved him, but when he saw the test results, collaborating with my former research group, he's, he saw these, you know, these are Harvard students, and the United States Harvard students, you know, are, you know, they're pretty selective, call it, university so that they couldn't even explain their answers. They might get the right quantitative answer, which is one of the problems in, in science. You know, we want them to know how to problem solve, because that's part of being a physicist or science, scientist, but to explain. So, um, so possibly, but at least in my, well, my field, I don't you know. The students may not like that instructor, because maybe they're being forced to, in an uncomfortable situation. So think about how you felt, um, when you were taking the pretest, not to cause, I mean, I, I'm going to say, it, I anticipate it's, you know, it's not going to feel good for s maybe all of you. Um, and so I did think about that, and I have empathy, but I also wanted to show, not that you didn't know anything. And students believe that. They, you know, they think, I'm coming in, I'm taking this pretest every Monday, and even though they've had instruction and everything they needed to do that, um, and this thing's telling me I'm dumb again. I mean, and so that's, that's happens. I'm not going to lie. But for most of the students who are engaged in their own learning and, you know, maybe, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. But it's just, it, I, I don't know what your student population would do here. I'm not, I'm going to say they're culturally young people like in the United States, but it may be you foster more um, community and that they have more free expression here than in the United States, or maybe worse. I'm going to guess probably better than in the United States. I'm no, I'm, I mean that from being on campus. Um, it could be specific to your university. I don't know. So, um, so it, it, it could be that the proficiency. Uh, I mean, the proficiency is definitely the competency, but the personality, uh, small or less, that research has shown in physics education, in physics courses, that the size of the class doesn't matter. And that even honor students and majors can improve their understanding compared to a class where they didn't have research-based materials. Um, but this is all. The, this one is, you know, part of the the a very complex project and delivery. And it, they're published, and people Harvard used them. Um, I don't know if they still are. So it's um, it's just an example. And if anybody wants to know more about the teaching of learning and physics, or the um, scholarship of <coughs> teaching and learning, excuse me, what, that's a term that Rebecca uses. Um, you can come and see me personally. I'll be around tomorrow, and then in the afternoon we meet with some other people. But uh, if you want to know more about scholarship in, in physics, or, or more like how you might look at 
your own class. But I would say start small. You start small and um, practice before you go into the class if you can. If it's something you haven't done before. And um, it, it's just difficult. But it's worth, you're in education because you like being with, you want to affect people's lives. One of you, each one of you is going to have how many hundreds of students through your lifetime? So, yeah. So, so I'm glad they invited us to come. But we, we can't do justice to you in three days. <laughs> but at least I think you have a very good place you're at with Monica and, and, and other people. And um, Claudia. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take general questions or if you need to leave. Uh -huh. uh, when you do this exercise in small groups, uh, do you have a general closure? I mean, at some point, the questions or comments that emerge in one group, mm -hmm. does it get to the whole group? I try to not to do They're not written to do that. They're standalone, but it requires that I'm prepared to anticipate the questions. And, but there is written in there, and you, I'm not sure if your group or anyone got to it. It says check your, so the students got used to, and we just have to, we at the research group as a curriculum developer had to make some decisions. Because there's only, there was only, and they have a really good situation. Um, uh, w one experienced TA, like from that, my res that research group, so that was their thing. And then two new graduate students into the department who were not, um, who had taught that way either. Mm -hmm. They knew their subject matter. So they were teaching by telling. So imagine, so I'm in the classroom with my, my peers, my other graduate students, and they're like, oh, but, you know. <laughs> and then they get to the board. Oh, Q squared over <laughs> R, K. That's the Coulomb force that we were talking about in this tutorial. And if you do this, and you make this one bigger, <laughs> okay, you got the idea. So, but we were able to do, to, at least the University of Washington does that well, but it requires training. But it, it's just, it's um, the me we only have 50 minutes with them. We know that student population. Um, and I, I think it's good to have one where it forces them to raise their hand because I couldn't get through. I mean, I got to almost every one. But I get, I'm a scientist too, and I'm so interested in what you're learning, <laughs> how you're thinking about inquiry, that I, not, I don't prefer, I don't like to be a classroom teacher. I'd rather do something where we have more time and more open to changes. So, okay. thanks for your question. Uh -huh. Okay, I, th I think it's probably time to be dismissed. <laughs> but you can stick around if you want to. Like I said, we're going to be around um, tomorrow in the morning and then maybe after we meet with the um, proposal, people who are going to get, discuss their proposals. <laughs>